What on earth do egg-laying rabbits have to do with Easter? And where did the word Easter come from anyway? Is it connected to the pagan deity Ishtar of the Bible? And how does all of this relate to the resurrection of Christ anyway? In the next few minutes, we're going to answer all of these questions and more as we look into the historical Passover versus the modern-day Easter. The real question is not, is Easter pagan in origin, but when did Christians stop celebrating Passover in the first place to even create this debate? If we could find evidence both in the Bible and early Christian documents that prove without a shadow of a doubt that the early believers kept Passover without fail and never dreamed of celebrating the Lamb of God any other way, then that would be powerful evidence that somewhere down the line we have strayed from the original path. This evidence not only exists, my friends, it is irrefutable. It's undeniable that not only did the early Christians keep Passover, but that it was the original intent of our Messiah to do just that. After all, Jesus, or Yeshua in the original Hebrew, commanded us from his own lips that we should keep the Passover when he said at his own Passover, which we call the Last Supper, do this in remembrance of me. In that very moment, he, for the very first time, connected the exodus of Egypt to the exodus and redemption of all mankind from sin, from the very blood of the true Passover lamb that would be spilled the very next day. The second piece of evidence is the Apostle Paul. We know that Paul kept and taught his churches to keep the Passover when he said in 1 Corinthians 5.8, Therefore let us keep the feast of Passover, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So now we have the Passover lamb himself telling us to keep it and remember him in the process. And we have Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit instructing all believers to quote, keep the feast with all sincerity and truth. But do we have any evidence outside of the Bible that the Gentile churches kept Passover as well? We know that the early Christians kept it without fail until it was outlawed by the Roman church in 325 AD. In fact, it all started with the very first debate about this subject in 193 AD between the Church of Rome that wanted to celebrate the resurrection on Easter and the churches in the East that wanted to follow in the footsteps of the disciples and keep it according to the scriptures. Unfortunately, the anti-Semitic Roman church at the time wanted nothing to do with anything that appeared to be, quote, Jewish, even if it was a direct command from scripture because in their mind, it was the Jews that killed Jesus. Fortunately for us today, we have the record of Polycrates from that first debate. He was the eighth Christian bishop over the very church of Ephesus we find in the Bible, who had this to say. Talking about the seven bishops before him, going back to the apostle John, he writes, all these observe the 14th day of the Passover according to the gospel, deviating in no respect but following the rule of faith. And my relatives always observe the day when the people put away the leaven. And he's referring there, my friends, to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The victor of Rome, incredibly, who was presiding over the debate, sought to excommunicate the entire church of Asia for even attempting to keep Passover according to the date of the Bible and not in the new Christian tradition. The famous Roman Emperor Constantine would eventually forever settle the debate by issuing his decree in 325 by saying, For we have it in our power, if we abandon their custom, talking about Passover, to prolong the due observance of this ordinance, talking about Easter, to future ages, by a truer order which we have preserved from the very day of the Passion until the present time. Let us then have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd, for we have received from our Savior a different way. With one stroke of the pen by the anti-Semitic, self-appointed Christ on earth, the Roman pontiff forever changed the direction of the originally authentic Christian church. Where once we celebrated Passover under the command of Rabbi Yeshua, who told us to do Passover in remembrance of him, we now, under the command of Rome, celebrate a holiday called Easter which suspiciously sounds like the very Ishtar of the Bible, that bare-breasted fertility goddess of the East, that just so happened to make it into the Roman pantheon under the guise of Venus. 
And I'm sure there's probably no connection from the Roman mandated holiday of Easter and their goddess of the East, who is also coincidentally called the Queen of Heaven, or the egg that just so happened to be the symbol of fertility in virtually all pagan religions. Hmm. Nope, I don't see any connection at all. In the end, the debate, my friend, shouldn't be whether or not the origins of Easter are pagan. The debate should simply be whether or not we should follow in the footsteps of Christ, the disciples, and all the early believers surrounding them, or should we follow like blind sheep the emperor shepherd of Rome, century after century after century. And in case you're not real familiar with the Yeshua-centered Passover and the unbelievably rich symbolism that's connected to us today, here are just a few points to consider. One, Passover is connected to the Last Supper where Yeshua said, do this in remembrance of me, as I mentioned a couple of times. It's also connected to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where everyone removes leaven from their homes, which of course represents sin according to the scriptures. The shank bone on the traditional Seder plate represents the Passover lamb, Jesus himself. The partially dipped in salt water reminds us of our tears when we're slaves to sin. The horseradish cautions us against the powerful aftertaste that sin has in our lives. The sweet Hariset apple mixture reminds us of the sweetness of God's word when we follow it. And the three pieces of matzah bread that traditionally are connected to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit with the middle piece being broken, wrapped in linen, and then hid away for the children to find after dinner. Imagine this, my friends, for over a thousand years, the Jewish people who don't even believe in Jesus have been taking these three pieces of bread, taking the middle one, breaking it in half, taking that one half, wrapping it in linen, and hiding it for after dinner. And they don't even know why. Nobody knows where the tradition got started. I'll bet that it got started in a Messianic Jew's home that believed in Yeshua and wanted to connect and do this in remembrance of Him. And those are just a few examples, my friend. But now let's compare that with Easter. That has the Easter bunny, has Easter ham, has Easter egg hunts, and the tradition of getting dressed to the hilt for that sunrise Easter service. Now don't get me wrong, they both celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, and that's amazing. But only one is found in the Bible, and only one was celebrated by all the disciples and early believers before it was outlawed. Going against the grain, my friends, to do Bible things in Bible ways and call Bible things by Bible names, it's not the most popular thing to do today for sure. But it is the bravest. When Nehemiah tried to rebuild the ancient wall, it wasn't too popular in his day either. But it was what was needed to preserve the people of God of his day and to repair the foundations of their faith. Could the Spirit be doing the same thing today? Could He be awakening His people to rebuild the ancient foundations of our ancestors in order to prepare you the way of the Lord for His final return? I believe the Spirit emphatically says yes. But the real question is what do you say? To find out more about Passover and the power it has to completely revolutionize your family during this time of year, go to passionfortruth.com right now and check out our entire Passover series and God's prophetic calendar where you can discover all the amazing connections of not just Passover, but how all the feasts of the Lord connect with the first and second comings of our Messiah. Until then, I'm Jim Staley with Passion for Truth Ministries. Shalom.